In the January of 1974, a man by the name of Duncan Lunan published an article called Space Probe from Epsilon Bootis. It concerned a mystery surrounding long-delayed radio echoes, or LDEs, first reported in the 1920s. Mysterious echoes of the transmitter's voice, which were far too powerful to have been simple reflections from Earth. Experimenters studying all over the world found that their outgoing pulses were being returned to them with a delay of three seconds, as if they were being amplified and returned by something at the distance of the Moon, but definitely not the Moon itself. These delay times began to vary upwards from three seconds in increasingly complicated sequences, but with no variation in intensity, still indicating a single source amplifying and returning the pulses. Professor Ron Bracewell of Stanford suggested in 1960 that the echoes might have been rebroadcast by an unmanned probe from another civilization, a craft attempting to get our attention, and in 1972, Duncan would make an incredible discovery, successfully making a translation of the echo patterns. The variations of delay times appeared random, but Professor Bracewell himself had suggested that if indeed a probe, the first signal might be a star map. After plotting the delay times in chronological order, he found what indeed looked like a star map. Upon showing this to astronomers, it was recognized to have been a warped image of Epsilon Bootis in the constellation Bootis. Arcturus, the brightest star in the constellation, seemed to be out of place in the map, but on checking was shown at its plotted location within the map about 13,000 years ago. Predictably, the discoveries were treated as suspect and with great hostility by the academic community. Sadly, this pressure led to Duncan withdrawing his entire translation work and research. Did Duncan Lunan actually decipher the first message ever translated from an alien civilization? More research into this incredible echo anomaly is clearly needed, and the results of which released to the world. Undoubtedly, one of the most spectacular and beautiful planets of our solar system, Saturn. Although other planets, such as Jupiter, also own a ring, they are too faint to see without powerful orbital telescopes. An earthly, physics-defying polar storm, spotted by Voyager in 1981, had winds swirling in a hexagonal shape. This most peculiar of storms was confirmed by the infamous flyby by Cassini in 2006. However, Saturn's rings are not just made up of mountainous-sized blocks of perfectly pure ice. Intriguingly, there does indeed exist claims by ex-NASA employees of objects of extraterrestrial origins and or interest locked within the orbit of this gigantic planetary orbital ring with some going further with which what others claim are tin pot theories that said objects are, in fact, sending our planet peculiar radio signals. We find Saturn, and indeed the secrets it may be hiding, especially within its spectacular ring, highly compelling. We don't usually cover the regular, unusual anomalies found by the countless amateur UFO investigators out there who are tirelessly combing the terrain in and around our neighboring planets, moons and asteroids in a search for possible alien craft, artificial structures or even ancient ruins. Although some of these formations can indeed be intriguing, they're often easily disregarded as mere natural formations. However, our next anomaly, we believe, could be seen as a considerable mystery. Since its launch on the 9th of March 2003, the probe explorer Hayabusa has completed several interplanetary flybys, traveling a total of 2 billion kilometers to arrive at an asteroid known as Itakawa, or more precisely, 25143 Itakawa, on September 12, 2005, successfully carrying out numerous scientific observations of the asteroid since then. However, what is astonishing regarding this new research is what has been found within these new images taken of our space-traveling neighbor. 
It seems, during its enormous orbital journey around the cosmos, it's picked up an unusual passenger. Clearly no normal space debris. This mysterious object, now perched or possibly impaled upon the front of the asteroid, looks for all the world like an artificial satellite. A huge, perfectly spherical object with three clearly distinct yet not too damaged legs or more likely receiver antenna protruding from the area which impacted the asteroid. It's resting upon the so-called Woomera Desert District of the Space Rock and was clearly not there the last time it was photographed. Could this object possibly be a satellite from an alien planet? Maybe still active? Did the asteroid have an extremely close call with a possible alien neighbor, avoiding an impact we would have never learnt of? Itakawa is a Mars crosser asteroid, and interestingly, it was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission by a space-going nation, and is still the smallest asteroid ever photographed. It was discovered in 1998 by the Linear Project, and was given the provisional designation 1998 SF-36. However, in August 2003, it was officially named after Hideo Itakawa, a Japanese rocket scientist. Maybe Hideo spotted something. The object it now carries is clearly not of normal formation. Not only does it not look natural, but displays a symmetrical design similar to those found within our own artificial objects, such as satellites. And due to this object being caught floating through space, just like our own satellites do, it's undoubtedly a very compelling anomalous object. Was this small asteroid chosen for the first major exploratory program above all other asteroids because the Japanese knew something we didn't? Just what could this object be? We just hope they explore it further, and whatever they discover, they share it with the world. When they land and the hatch opens, Perhaps we will be looking at ourselves in the mirror. Many of you will be aware of the interstellar traveler, which visited our solar system from a galaxy far, far away a few years ago. Named Oumuamua, it is now recognized as the first known interstellar object ever successfully detected as it passed through our solar system. Formally designated 1-2017-U1, it was discovered on the 19th of October 2017 by Robert Work while using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory within Hawaii. He spotted the mysterious object 40 days post-solar transit on the 9th of September that year. Many people have wondered about the true origins and indeed true identity of the object, yet few have received the backlash which Avi Loeb experienced on November of 2018 when he published a new research paper in an astrophysics journal. Scientists publish thousands of research papers every year. These papers will often attract little public attention. However, Loeb's latest work gained a suspiciously high level of controversy and rejection when he dared to cover the rather taboo subject within this so-called official field, aliens. The subject of the paper was the mysterious supposed space rock. He posits that it likely traveled for billions of years past countless other stars before reaching our own. Eventually, it will cross the edge of our solar system and into interstellar space again. The leading hypothesis among astronomers is that Oumuamua is an odd-looking comet, a remnant of another solar system kicked out by natural forces and sent barreling through the cosmos. Loeb, however, offered a rather different explanation. Quote, Oumuamua could be a probe one deliberately sent to our solar system by an alien civilization. The detection of extraterrestrial beings, the most significant scientific discovery in human history, if we were ever told about such discoveries, of course, one must remember that as a civilization, many believe systems openly objective to the possibility of alien life, many of which are over a millennial old. The thought of finding sapient life beyond Earth, of learning that we are not alone, however, is the pursuit of countless individuals within the modern world. So it is no surprise that his opinions have been so widely debated. But additionally, there is seemingly another possible reason for why the paper was so widely reported on. This being the fact that Loeb is, in fact, 
a tenured Harvard professor within the astronomical department. Quote, if this was some random astronomer that you had never heard of from, say, Equatorial Guinea, you probably wouldn't write a story on it, says Brian Gensler, the director of the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics and a former colleague of Loeb's at Harvard. He continued, There's a lot of astronomers that have outlandish ideas, and most of them aren't taken seriously by the community, and most of the time the media don't really give attention to them. End quote. Loeb has two decades worth of experience and is well regarded in the field. So, regardless of what others would like him to believe, his opinions matter. Was Oumuamua really an ancient alien's exploratory craft, one spying on ours and many other solar systems? If it is, it means we are indeed not alone. What's more, it means we have undoubtedly been found. So, the professor's opinions, no matter how controversial, we find highly compelling. Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design during World War II, once cryptically stated, quote, We cannot take the credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, The people of other worlds. Additionally, according to Above Top Secret by Timothy Good and William Morrow, Oberth's fellow space pioneer, Werner von Braun, echoed this mysterious reference even including the existence of extraterrestrials, when he stated in 1959, quote, We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, and whose base is at present unknown to us. More I cannot say at present. We are now engaged in entering into closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months' time, it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter. End quote. Just who were the people of other worlds that Dr. Oberth spoke of? Or indeed, these entities that von Braun referred to? With only Oberth's quotations, one could presume a possible reverse engineering of alien craft. However, with von Braun's more detailed expose, this possibility seems to be excluded in favor of pertained actual assistance and contact with advanced beings. Many people also believe that an encounter with these beings, along with Third Reich craft built with their technology, was once encountered in an operation known as Operation High Jump. According to certain independent researchers, Richard E. Byrd, admiral of this operation, possibly encountered a hostile, formidable opponent, who he has claimed to have described as fighters that were able to fly from one pole to another with incredible speed. In reality, however, whatever Bird's expedition experienced may never be fully publicly disclosed, as all reports, including Bird's personal log entries, remain mysteriously classified. But the connections between these curious quotations, and indeed the rumored encounters by this classified operation, are certainly intriguing. Furthermore, Operation High Jump was originally organized by Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. Interestingly, in 1949, Forrestal was sent to recover from a supposed nervous breakdown at Bethesda Naval Hospital. However, after allegedly ranting to staff about the Antarctic, UFOs, and an underground Nazi city, Forrestal was denied all visitors. Shortly after, he mysteriously died in a fall from his hospital room window. What did Forrestal know? Were his perceived delusional rants based upon reality? According to the legend of the German Vril Society, a secret remote viewing was held in 1919 at an old hunting lodge near Brechtsgaden. During this event, Maria Arsik, a self-proclaimed medium, presented her supposed telepathic messages, which she claimed to have received from an extraterrestrial civilization existing in the constellation of Taurus. It is reported that these messages contained instructions for building a circular flight machine. It is interesting to note that German Oriental scholars and occultists alike regarded such mystic teachings with complete seriousness, with well-documented, well-funded diligent efforts put forth to discover 
and such individually proclaimed powers and their messages therein into viable technological realities. What happened in the Antarctic? Who were these people from other worlds that von Braun and Oberth spoke of? Did the Third Reich make contact with an alien or possible highly advanced once ancient civilization, allowing them to engineer mystifying technologies? We find such claims, rumors, and fragments of evidence to support such possible realities highly compelling. Less 1 and 2, the Lincoln Experimental Satellite 1 and 2, were essentially identical experimental communication satellites. Less 1, launched from Cape Canaveral on 11th February 1965, it accomplished only a few of its objectives. Apparently because of the miswiring of the ordnance circuitry, the satellite never left circular orbit and ceased transmitting in 1967. Less 2, the twin of Less 1 fared much better. It achieved its planned final orbit on 6th May 1965. However, Less 1, the American satellite, abandoned in 1967 as a piece of space junk, has mysteriously began transmitting signals. An amateur radio astronomer in North Cornwall accidentally picked up the signal and, after cross checking with various lists, has identified it was Less 1 built by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and launched in 1965 and has been drifting out of control ever since. Phil Williams from Nearview noticed its peculiar signal and suspects it's caused by a tumbling end over end. He believes every four seconds the solar panels become shouted by the engine. It gives off a signal, a particularly ghostly sound as the voltage from the solar panels fluctuates, Phil says. It is likely that the onboard batteries have now disintegrated and something has caused the transmitter on 237 MHz, believed for decades to have been dead and lost to the vast emptiness of space, to mysteriously start up again. Phil says it's remarkable to think that electronics built nearly 50 years ago, 12 years before Voyager 1, and long before microprocessors and integrated circuits, is still capable of working in the hostile environs of space. What do you think of the less's mysterious signal? Has it been hijacked by aliens attempting to make contact? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.